Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger for premiumbeat.com. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at some quick tips for adjusting the color of water on landscapes. A lot of times water can show up with various color tones on your video footage that doesn't look appealing. I wanna share some tips with you that can be done in After Effects to fix those issues and for the most part, we'll be using the hue and saturation effect with basic masks. We'll also look at how we can create some trippy looks as well. The idea here isn't to spend hours trying to fix one shot because in that case, you'd be better suited just to wait and film on a day when the water looks the way you want it to. This is more for projects that you need a timely fix and reshooting isn't a plausible option. I also have the footage I'm working with today available for download on the blog post for this tutorial. So make sure you download that if you wanna follow along. Let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. All right, so I wanna start out with a shot that's kind of ideal for this technique, and then we're gonna move on to some more difficult shots a little bit later on. But you can see, I've got a shot of this flooded river with the water that has a little bit of a blue tint to it. And I'll go ahead and turn off the hue and saturation effect that I had applied. And you probably saw this in the example shots, but this is a flooded river. Obviously the water is very muddy, but what's nice about this shot is the water is only on the bottom half of the screen. So it's gonna be really easy for us to mask over this and apply our effect to it. Now where I live in Arkansas, the water is usually gonna be either clear or it's gonna be muddy like this. And obviously muddy water is not gonna be super appealing for a client video, especially if they weren't expecting it. You know, if you bring them some shots of the river and they see this, they may definitely want some water that has more of that traditional look, kind of blue tinted. You can imagine what a client might like in that respect. So the idea here is to use a timely solution. And I experimented around with the hue and saturation effect. This is definitely something I wish I would have learned a few years ago because this is a really effective technique, especially for landscape shots like this one, or if you've got some stock footage shots where the water's a little bit off colored and you can make it a little more appealing again using this effect. So let's go ahead and just walk through this from start to finish. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna right click here to create a new adjustment layer. I've got that above my footage. And I'm gonna come here and grab the pen tool. And you can use it on Roto Bezier if you want it to be smooth or you can just do it with traditionally hard edge. I'm just gonna walk through here, I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm just gonna mask over kind of the area where this water is. We're gonna feather it so it won't be a hard edge again. But I'm just gonna click above this, just along the water line. And I'll just mask down around this footage. And if you need to come in here and make some adjustments to raise it up a little bit, you definitely can. And so now what we need to do is I'm gonna select that adjustment layer, I'm gonna come here to Effect, and then I'm gonna to go to Color Correction and Hue and Saturation. I'm gonna center this back up, and I'm gonna turn off the mask visibility there. And if we come down here and just under the Master Hue, this is really where we're gonna control the color and how we're gonna change the color of things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spin this and you can see what's happening. We're already changing the color of the water. But what's really nice about this is, obviously as the name implies, we're only affecting the hue and saturation of the color. We're not affecting any luminance. So you can see we still get these nice contrasty areas. In the areas of the water where the little waves crest up, you can see they're still gonna remain white. And the dark areas, like these shadow areas of the water, are gonna stay dark. So obviously we don't wanna have this hard edge on the mask there. So I'm gonna select that adjustment layer. I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard. And I'm gonna hit MM twice to bring up the mask feather. And I'm just gonna increase this around 10. And you can just adjust this depending on your shot, but you just need a little feather up there. And I may bring the mask down here just a little bit too so it doesn't rise up on the bluff line there too much. But you can just kind of look at this and be your own judge depending on, again, whatever shot you're working with. So now we can see a quick ramp preview and see what that water looks like. Obviously this is very hyper-realistic because the water's never gonna be that blue. We're not in the Caribbean here. And what I typically like doing is on that adjustment layer, I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard. That'll bring up the opacity, and I usually like to lower this anywhere around 50 to 60%. You can see as I select that and just drag it down, it's gonna kind of cross in between that really saturated blue and the original muddied water there. So again, if I just set this around 60%, we're gonna get kind of this bluish gray tone. That's definitely something that's more realistic for this area. And again, it's quite a stark contrast between having it this color and the original muddy color. But obviously, if you wanted to create some trippy, kind of abstract looks, you could do that as well with the Master Hue. Just come up here and adjust the color. And obviously, if you wanted it to look like something that spilled into the water or something like that, this would be an easy way to do that as well. But again, this is kind of the ideal shot for this because the water is on the bottom half of the video. We don't have any trees or anything like that in the water. So now let's go ahead and look at a more difficult shot. And I've got another shot here, kind of an aerial of that same river when it was flooded. And you can see we have lots of stuff going on here. We have a little subtle movement of the shot from the drone. We've got trees that are down here in the water. We have shadows. We have light changing from the clouds passing overhead. So we have lots of different variables in this shot and we can still use the same techniques to correct this shot as well. It requires a few more steps, but it's actually just as easy as the previous shot. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to select my footage down here and I'm actually going to hit Control D, Command D on a Mac to duplicate it and I'm going to duplicate it twice. So I've got three total copies of that footage and we go ahead and turn off the bottom two. And on this top copy, what we need to do is we need to just quickly key out the orange color from this water. And it's, it's definitely a lot simpler than it sounds. So with that footage selected, I'm going to come here to Effect. And I'm going to come down here to King. And I'm going to select the Key Light. This is one of the basic King effects native inside of After Effects. I'm just going to zoom in here on the muddy water. And I'm going to select the Color Picker tool right here under Screen Color. And before I actually select the muddy water, what I recommend doing is holding Control on your keyboard. And you can see the size of the color picker is going to change and when I hold control it's going to get a little bit bigger. That's going to allow me to select an area whenever I click there. So I'm going to hold control and I'm just going to select on this. And now you can see I went ahead and keyed out that color. You can see screen color here and it has that muddy water color. You'll notice the water has changed to seemingly be black but really it's just transparent. If we come down here and turn on transparency we'll see that. But it's also nice because it's left us kind of this white lighter color still on the water. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on the second copy, turn on the visibility for that. And with that second copy selected, we're going to come here to Effect, and we're going to go to Color Correction and Hue and Saturation again. And now we can go ahead and adjust the master hue of this, and you can see as I do that, we're only affecting the watercolor. Now I'm going to zoom back in here, and this is going to be kind of prone to some compression issues. You can see we have some blockiness going on here, and that's a combination of the Hue and Saturation effect being all the way at 100 right now, but also our keying effect. So if we come back to that top copy, we can do a few things to kind of dial that back. And so I'm gonna come down here to screen mat. And if I go ahead and set this to be screen mat for view, we can see you know some of the results of the keying here. You can see we have a lot of compression blocking going on. And again, depending on the quality of your footage, this is some basic drone footage, it's highly compressed. And so that's why we're getting this on the footage right now. But I'm going to go ahead and adjust a little bit under the clip black for the screen mat options here. I'll go ahead and increase that a little bit. You can see it's going to dial that back some. But another thing that will help is going to be the screen softness. I'll increase that a little bit as well just to get rid of those hard edges. And I'm going to change the view now back to be final result. Another thing you can do though is under the screen gain here. It's currently at 100 by default. You can dial that back down and it's kind of like dialing down the opacity. You can see that there. And so that's one way you can kind of help dial down some compression as well. So I'm gonna leave that right now to be around 82. So now you can see our shot's starting to come together. It still is a little bit saturated for me though, so I'm gonna turn on this very bottom copy here. And what we're gonna do is on this middle copy, I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard again for opacity, and you can see I can go ahead and lower the opacity. And it's gonna, again, dial in between the saturated water and the muddy water. So I'll just kinda of set this in between an area that looks pretty good, something like this. Now one thing that's important to note when you're dealing with something like muddy water is that obviously it's not gonna have the same caustic nature as clear water would. And so if we look in here kind of close, you can see this water looks a little bit thick in nature. You can't really see through it very well. And of course that's because we're dealing with muddy water and we're just changing the color of it. So we're really doing the best we can do with that type of water. But that's just something to keep in note if the water, if some cases it may look a little bit odd, uh, particularly on a shot like this where you're looking directly down on it. Now, if it's just a quick cutaway shot, your client or someone else watching is probably not even going to notice it at all. But if you do look at the footage for a while and you kind of notice something a little bit off, that's the reasons because, again, we can't change the caustic value. We're just changing the actual color. And so, again, here we can see a quick ramp preview of this. And considering where we started from with the muddy water and coming to this now, this quickly, I think it's a pretty good result. Again, obviously dial in depending on whatever shot you're doing uh, so that it looks natural. And again, if you wanted to really make things trippy, you can just adjust the master hue up there and get all types of different colors. I really like this particular method though because you can see we didn't affect any of these trees that are here and we still have the shadows and stuff. So it all works together quite nice. And again, we're still getting those white highlights there. It look really nice. Here you can see another example of some footage where I've used this effect on. This is kind of more of a stock footage type effect. But again, you can see we're getting some nice contrast, white highlights here. And again, obviously if we go back to the original shot. This again was also from that same day with the flood and the muddy water. And what I've done here, just to kind of walk you through this, I added an adjustment layer, which had a hue and saturation effect. You can see with that on and off. And then I added another adjustment layer that had a, a curves effect on it and a Lumetri color effect where I just boosted the cyan saturation again, really adding some more contrast to the dark areas and those highlight areas. Finally, another example where this technique can really be beneficial is on something like a pond or something like that, particularly if you're doing a real estate shot. And so you can see this here. I've tinted that pond more of a blue color. Obviously in the country, ponds are prone to algae and all types of other things. So the actual color of them is not really going to be that appealing, especially 
on video when you're boosting the greens of everything else around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this adjustment layer and you can see you get this really nasty green color tone here, not appealing at all. It doesn't look very good for a real estate type video. But what I've done here is I've just added an adjustment layer and I went ahead and just keyframed a little simple mask around that pond and feathered it. So it kind of gradually goes from the original color into more of that blue color tint with the hue and saturation effect here. And of course you could obviously adjust the color of that as well. You'll definitely want to dial the opacity back though, really meeting somewhere in the middle uh, to get a more realistic type result. You can see again, even though it still doesn't look the best, it's a lot better than what it looked like without it. So, all right guys, hopefully you picked up a few tips that will help you quickly correct the color of water on any landscape shots you have. For the project file from this tutorial and for more tutorials, make sure you check out the Premium Beat blog page. They have lots of filmmaking tutorials, resources, and articles on there. This has been Charles Jager for PremiumBeat.com. Thanks for watching.